There's a story that I saw out of Uganda that really made me upset. And let's get into the details of this thing that would really just probably make any of you upset. Listen to this. So they say a South Carolina couple accused of torturing their 10 year old foster child in Uganda have avoided a jail term by paying a $28,000 fine as part of a plea bargain, sparking outrage among local activists. So they did the worst thing they can do to this child. And all they had to do was pay $28,000. That's it. They didn't get the jail sentence they were supposed to get. None of that. They got to just pay money and get out. Now let, let's, let's, before we get into this a little more, do you think if this was an Ugandan couple that had adopted a white child and yes, this child that they had was HIV positive. So imagine this child being a European child, HIV positive, and he did the same thing. Do you think those European authorities would have allowed the Africans to pay $28,000 and get out of jail? No. See, this is some of the issues that is on the continent. Well, let's continue. So Nicholas and Mackenzie Spencer were living close to the Ugandan capital of Kampala. It said when they were first arrested back in December, 2022, it said a nanny who worked for the couple told authorities about how their Ugandan native foster child was being treated. The initial charges facing the couple included aggravated child torture and aggravated child trafficking. They said the latter of which carries a death penalty in Uganda. Now the Spencers were able to come to a plea agreement with prosecutors, which saw them pay fines amount to around 28,000 after pleading guilty to child cruelty and degrading treatment charges. Now there's an activist by the name of Proscovia uh, Najumba called the agreement a mockery of justice. The actor said, how can a couple who admitted to have beaten and mistreated a child deprive him of food and water and made him stay in a cold room with our clothes, be given a light sentence to pay a fine and leave? That's what Najumba said um, in response to this verdict. Now they said the pair also pleaded guilty to breaking Uganda's visa laws by working and by staying in the country without documentation. So they were illegal, illegal immigrants. They said they had been living in Africa since 2017. Now, most countries you travel to, you know, you'll get either a 90 day visa, a six month visa, something like that, but you have to constantly renew your visa. Now, if you want to stay, then what people do, they, they call it a visa trip. So they'll leave the country, go somewhere else about a day or two, come right back, renew their visa all over again. There are people that do that all the time that's on the continent, at least until they get to the point they can at least get a residency. But these people was breaking Ugandan law, didn't care about that at all. They say the child was in need of help and they say in support, having lost his father and having been abandoned by his own mother. They say unfortunately the accused persons failed to manage his peculiar behaviors. According to high court judge, Alice Kumohangi. Now said speaking to the news, they said the couple's lawyer, David Maponga said that his clients were merely trying to discipline and deal with the child who was difficult to manage due to psychological problems. They said perhaps they went to fire. Mahaponga conceded. He said the attorney cited the pair's lack of experience as parents as a reason for their missteps. He said a couple began fostering a child in 2018, a year after moving to the country. He said in total they had three children in their care. And since the arrest of the boy's parents, foster parents, he'd been placed in the care of the state. It's around 13,000 of the fines that say will go to him. Mm, that it remains to be seen. They say the pair was freed on bail in March of prosecutors at the time accusing them of having recruited, transported, and kept the child through abuse. They say a, a position of vulnerability. They say for purposes of exploitation. They say the couple, they say were being held in the Luzira Maximum Security Prison. Interesting thing about that particular prison, they have male and female inmates in that particular jail, but they should have not gotten that sentence at all. See what I have seen is it was some people, you know, you talk about self hate, self hate is a global thing with black folk. It is, it's in America, it's in Latin America, it's in the Caribbean, it's in the continent of Africa. We have this self hate disease. 
that's in all of us. And that self-hate disease comes from slavery. It comes from colonization. That's where it comes from. And you literally have to do the work to uproot the self-hate out of you, to uproot the sellout gene that's been literally placed in you by colonization and by slavery. You have to get that out of you. Because if that lawyer was truly on code, they shouldn't have got nobody to represent them if he was on code. They say, wait a minute, you did this to a child in my country and you was over here legally? I'm not defending you, no. I'm not doing it. Sorry. You on your own. You go before the judge and deal with it by yourself. If they had a true code, right? They're guilty of what they done. Now, if this would have been a Ugandan doing this, would they got the same slap on the wrist? No, we know this. My thing is these folks come over to African countries and I've seen them get away with a whole lot of things, but you wouldn't be able to get away with it in their country. If they would have did the exact, if some Ugandans would have did the exact same thing in South Carolina, cause that's where they from. If they would have did the exact same thing in South Carolina, do you think here that would have happened? No, they wouldn't be able to pay no money and leave. That that's the sickening part. That's very sickening. And the people of Uganda should be, you know, really getting at that judge, getting at that prosecutor for that, making a deal. No, man, that's, that's a sickness. This is very, very sick. In my opinion, you can't have a country. If you are doing things like that, children is supposed to be protected. They are. And you know, y'all should be telling president of 70 about this. I guarantee you, he hear about it. He is going to roll. And maybe, and maybe the president needs to know about this story. I mean, send him this story. Say, Hey, president of 70, check out this story because you know, these people should, that should never happen in, in any country.